Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I talked a lot about how Islam is morally unacceptable because it reduces human dignity to very low levels and is completely contrary and incompatible with the rights and freedoms of humans. But that's not the only thing that makes Islam a bad idea. There are major logical and scientific issues in the Quran that claims to be the unquestionable, unchangeable, perfect word of an almighty God, Allah. When you are a Muslim, as I used to be, you learn that Islam is perfect and that the Quran is superior to everything, any idea, any observation, any evidence. Therefore, when the Quran contradicts obviously with something very clear that we observe, people who believe in this religion go on and either reject commonly accepted evidence or they suddenly change their interpretations of the Quran and imply that the Quran knew all of these newfound facts 1400 years ago. And somehow Allah gave the infidels the chance to discover all of these things. Let me go on and show you a lot of things that are either completely false or just weird in the Quran. Muslims pass around this one thing so often, that Allah created every living thing in pairs. And I also want to combine this with my second point, that every living thing, every animal, anything that lives, creates communities. We know by now in the 21st century that that is absolutely not true. There are enough living beings, enough animals, that don't come in pairs and that also don't live in societies. Many animals completely produce, reproduce by themselves. So the Quran is wrong here. But how would the author of the Quran know that? The author of the Quran also says that humans were created from dust or from clay. We still have to find out scientifically that such a thing happened somewhere in our history. It didn't. But let's come back to animals. It's quite interesting. The Quran claims, for example, that animals that produce milk are a miracle from Allah. And it goes on and describes how milk is uh, available from the bellies of those animals created between blood and feces. That's scientifically wrong. That doesn't happen between feces and blood. But that's not the only thing. The Quran also claims in the same verse that milk is completely pure and agreeable to humans to drink. But pure milk that comes out of a cow, for example, is infected with bacteria. It's not healthy for everyone to drink that milk directly. And many people have a natural intolerance against milk. Many, many people. But that's okay, since the, the author of the Quran also says that horses were created for transportation, for humans. Horses were domesticated over a very, very long time. Before that, they were just wild animals, just like so many other wild animals that are like horses and run around in nature. The Quran also says that there are eight types of cattle. Eight means male and female of each, which means that there are four types of cattle. And it counts them. Look how it counts them. Well, there are so many others. Apparently, Allah's knowledge of animals was limited to Arabia. I guess Muhammad also believed that lightning is a punishment from up above, from Allah, to smite humans. Huh? But hey, who are we to question? Allah is the one who makes us ships and who makes them sail on the sea. The Quran is also quite knowledgeable about stars, and it says that stars could fall down on us. Down where exactly? Stars are very far objects that are not just small like that. Where exactly do they fall? Do they all coincidentally fall all together from such a distance on Earth? Because that's down, our, our ground is down. What? Yes, the Quran wasn't really able to tell much about stars. The Quran also calls stars little objects, little adornment. They are just hanging above there just to make everything look beautiful. The stars are also described as being in the lowest, the nearest heaven, right above us. They are right here. This is apparently what the author of the Quran thought stars look like. And yeah, stars are also missiles thrown at devils. The moon also split in two, and can split in two in future, which is quite weird. Just imagine the earth splitting in two from, from the middle. But the author of the Quran was also quite ignorant about the moon, because it says multiple times that the moon is a light. The moon is not a light. The moon just reflects light coming from the sun. We learned about this not only by looking at the sky, we can also confirm this by going out in outer space and seeing these objects directly, which Allah apparently thought was never possible. Well, 
people who didn't believe in Allah made this possible. Allah wasn't able to participate in space travel, which is why he thought that the sun and the moon are in an orbit, following each other and can never reach each other. The sun is moving above the earth. Did you know that the sun has a resting place where it goes and stops? The sun really needs that. And the sun has also a rising place and a place where it eventually goes into a muddy spring. Apparently Allah didn't really understand the connection between the sun and shadows or between light and shadows because shadows are apparently controlled by Allah and he can make them longer and shorter. <laughs> and the sun and the moon will one day join together. They will come together. Can you even imagine that? All of this doesn't have to sound very new. The Quran also seems to adopt very old mythological beliefs about seven heavens and seven earths. There is no such thing. But maybe we will find this out in future. Maybe we will dig so far in future that we will land in the next earth. And then, then, we will say 1,800 years ago the Quran predicted this. By the way, did you know that the sky is actually a ceiling above us, like a dome? It's quite a miracle, it has no cracks at all. And Allah even points out that it's a miracle that the sky is held up by him without any pillars. Newsflash, Allah, the sky is not an object, it's just what we see from here. But according to the Quran, the sky could also fall down on us. It can fall down. What exactly is falling down? And that sky or heaven can also be rolled up one day, like a scroll. And did you know, before it was created, it used to be smoke. The sky wasn't there, nothing was there. It was all smoke. And what's more interesting is that Allah created all of that after he created Earth. So our planet was here, but everything around it, which the Earth depends on, was not here. Not even stars were here. Imagine, stars. The sun is also a star. It wasn't there. But that's okay. Allah also sends rain down from the sky. And he also sends hail down from the sky. He sends all of that down. It doesn't just happen in, in a natural process that we can all clearly observe. No, it's all sent down by Allah. As you can see, Allah is very merciful. He's so merciful that he also put mountains on our planet. He placed them on our planet like this. And they prevent earthquakes. They prevent the shaking of the earth. We still experience earthquakes, but those are also a punishment from Allah for the evildoers. Mountains are a result of the ground that we stand on. They weren't placed here. But Allah didn't know that. Just the way he also didn't know that there are indeed places in this world where the sun doesn't set or doesn't rise for a very long time. So it's quite harsh for a fasting person or a praying person to stick by the time instructions of the Quran. Imagine you're waiting somewhere, the sun hasn't set in the last four months, and you're waiting for the sun to set so you can start eating again because you have been fasting since it appeared. You are dead by now. It doesn't work that way. By the way, did you know that ants speak to each other in full sentences? That's a miracle. You know what's also a miracle? The fact that we know where semen comes from in a human body. But the Quran, the Almighty Allah's word, says something completely different about it. The Quran says it comes from between the backbones and ribs. Whom should we trust? Science that we can observe and confirm or Allah? Yes, Allah. That sperm, by the way, also turns into a clot of blood. That's part of the process when we are in our mothers, when we are coming into existence. Don't tell this to anyone, but we never become a clot of blood that doesn't happen. I can't blame Allah because he wasn't really that much of a genius about embryology. That's why he also tells us in his perfect book that bones are formed before flesh, which is not true. Well, Allah thought about humans the way someone would think uh, 1,400 years ago in the deserts of Arabia. He also thought that hearts have some special functions that people back then thought hearts have, like hiding their thoughts and secrets. When people say that about the heart, they don't actually mean that. Allah somehow uses that language as if it was true. Allah also said that there are barriers between waters, where salt water and sweet water don't mix. You must have all seen pictures of this miracle. A miracle that doesn't exist because such a thing does not 
exist. That's okay, we all have flaws. Mohammed probably had flaws too. But he shouldn't pretend that he got his word from an almighty, all-knowing Allah. From an almighty, all-knowing God who knows everything. Because he created everything. He created everything perfectly. That's what he says in the Quran. All the imperfections in this world, imperfections in our nature, everything around us, in human nature, birth defects, and people born imperfectly. And you know, the next time someone gets cancer because a natural process went totally wrong that you probably didn't have any influence on, don't blame it on Allah. Just blame it on something else because Allah made everything perfect. Maybe all of this is just figurative speech. Quite a nice excuse for such a major failure. When I was a Muslim, I couldn't really question these things because I believed in the Quran that I grew up with and the Quran says very early that whatever it says is true. But after a long time of suppressing and insulting my intelligence, I dared to question as everyone should. And now I know that the Quran is only the result of 7th century knowledge and fantasies in Arabia. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon. The link is below in the description. Or you can also support me on PayPal. Thank you all so much for all kinds of support. I'll see you again soon in another episode. Have a great day and stay away from Islam.